They had that. They could have gave that to everyone. They could have saved millions of lives, and they didn't. All right. It's Monday at 11 o'clock. You know what that means. It's the Chaz Palmentary Show. We are every Monday at 11 o'clock. We got the greatest guests in the world. You never know who you find on my show, folks. You never know. Don't forget, you want to come and see my one-man show, chazpalmentary.net. John, where am I in September? In September, you are on the 16th. You're in Millville, New Jersey at the Lavoy Theater. Lavoy Theater? September 17th, Montclair, New Jersey, the Wellmont Theater. Ah. September 22nd, Akron, Ohio, E.J. Thomas Hall. That's September. September 23rd, Cincinnati, Ohio, at the Taft Theater. That's just in September. And if you want to go after September, go to chazpalmentary.net. Don't forget my restaurants. Chaz Palmetary's Italian Restaurant on 30 West 46th Street and 264 Main Street. I got my cigars coming out soon. The Bronx Tale Cigars will be out in September. So a lot of great things are happening, but... Let's talk about our guest today. The man has a fucking career. He should write a novel, this guy. All right. His love life alone is a novel. Okay, I shouldn't even start even there. But uh, so many, a lot of people remember him from Saturday Night Live. He did incredible, him and Eddie Murphy. He was Frank Sinatra. Eddie was Stevie Wonder. Joe Piscopo. Joe. Yes. Great to see you, my brother. But, and wait yeah. a minute. And I yeah. forgot, you could hear this man huh? every... Yeah. Day, at what time, Joe? Oh, 6 to 10 in the morning, man. 6 to 10 in the morning, uh, that's 9.70 uh, a.m. The answer. The answer, man. Like you say, I am the answer. You are the answer. <laughs> Joe Piscopo, five days a week. Five days a week. Yeah, five days a week, man. We do four hours a day. Four hours, old school radio. Old school uh, radio. Uh, and wait a minute, yeah, on yeah. Sunday. Oh, that's the one, baby. Sunday. Yeah, man. You're on uh, ABC. Yeah, WABC. In WABC. New York. Yeah, yeah. Syndicated and, nationally now. Yeah, syndicated yeah. nationally and... Sundays with Sinatra. Sunday with Sinatra. Mr. S and you are kind enough. When I call, you always come on the shows, Chaz. Yes. You come on the air, and you you you, you still get the prize for the best Frank Sinatra story, the olive story. The olive, People right, request yeah, right. that. They request that. Oh, that's that. great. Okay, <laughs> well, but, Joe, before we get into all that, I, I, I have you here right now. And a lot of people always ask me these things. You grew up in Jersey. Yeah. And where did you grow up in Jersey? Family's from Newark. So I came outside of Newark. Yeah. Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, man. And back then, how was it? Was it a little still rough? Yeah. Well, you know what? My family came from Avellino, and they came on a great. Uh, one of my grandfathers came from Salerno. They went to Newark, New Jersey, and everybody kind of went to New York. They went to Newark, and they built up a big Italian American community in the North Ward of Newark, New Jersey. Right. And then from there, we went out to the country. They went to like Belleville, which is a town right near, but that was like country. Right. And then we go to Bloomfield. So it's Essex County, New Jersey, all out of Newark. And what it was, you know what? It was great back in the day. My father was brought up there, my, and, and his family, they were brought up there. Mom was born there in Newark, New Jersey, in the Ironbound. And it's a great history. It's like you with the Bronx. Right. That's the way we feel about that. That's with how Newark. you feel about that. Yeah, yeah. So you're from Bloomfield Avenue. Yeah, yeah. You Bloomfield Avenue, that's it. Remember Bloomfield Avenue, which is still a show that I want to do. They still and you wrote, if I may, yeah, wrote the first script of that. They, That's correct. And we got to get that going because it's you know it, right. it's, it's the ethnicity of this country. Chaz Palminteri, you know better than anybody, is the foundation of this country. Right. The folks that come in from other countries that learn the language, learn the laws, that right. love the country. You know, our grandparents. And we're talking about all immigrants. Uh, that's right. That's White, black, Chinese. Exactly right. Uh, Asian, that's whatever. It. That's it. All you right. go to Bluefield Avenue, epitomizes all the greatness of the ethnicity of America. Right. So here's this kid growing up in Jersey on Bluefield Avenue. When did you <laughs> say to yourself, ah. you know what? I, I, I like to be an actor, a singer, an entertainer. When did this happen? You know, I think it was third grade. Third and, grade. And my mom, I wanted to play baseball with Johnny Vargo and Johnny Labadee and the boys. In Brookdale Park. Right. So now, mom would say, you got to take piano. I said, mom, I don't want to take piano. She said, you got to take piano. Third wow. grade, third grade. I'm at third grade piano with Mrs. Gimbel in Glen Ridge, New Jersey. Right. Tom Cruise from Glen Ridge, I'm just saying. Not to drop names, but I'm just saying. <laughs> we got a great history in, right. in Jersey. So now, um, I remember we're doing a, a piano recital, right? Right. And and then we had to do like a, a Mexican theme, a Mexican theme. So we're playing the Mexican music. Right. And we had like a fake donkey 
a donkey, like a, a, and I'd wear the sombrero, you know. It was like a theme thing. It was like a and and so third grade. Third grade. That's so yeah, 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 nine, so, ten. I, yeah, yeah. So now, now we do the thing. It's great. Applause, applause, applause. I go off stage. Mrs. Gimble goes, oh, I go, what, what, what? Mrs. Gimble, what's the matter? She goes, I left the donkey on the stage. It can't be there for the next sketch. The donkey's on the stage. I go, I'll get the donkey. So I walk out and I walk out and I go, look at the donkey. I'm not seven, eight years old. Whatever, and I go, hey, what are you doing? Like that with my hand like this. Place broke out in laughter. And I, right there, right there, right there, I felt comfortable. I said, Okay, this is what I want to do. That's something, huh? Isn't that the wildest thing? You know, you feel it. You feel it or you don't. You have a comfort zone or you don't. When I see you do the Bronx Tale, <laughs> I, I know, you know, when you're talking yeah. on stage, it's your comfort zone. Yeah. Isn't it, Chaz? It's your comfort zone. It's my comfort zone. It's yeah. so weird when people say your comfort zone's on stage for me. Yeah. It's always been Sometimes on stage. Sometimes I'm more relaxed on stage I know, than off I stage. know. What is with that? What is with that? Uh, we're, we're, sit, we're, we're crazy. You got the band. You got the music. You got everything. You got we're a million crazy. things going on. It's a comfort zone. It's, right. it's, it's, a, it's a, just loving chaos, I right. guess. Right. Wow, that's, you know, isn't that the wildest thing? So you, so here am I, here you, here are you, say, well, I want to, uh, yeah, oh, I, I want to be an entertainer. So when did you start acting? Well, on? my mother wanted me, and my father is a lawyer. My father represented the non-English speaking blue collar laborers, yeah. like his father was. You know, a lot of the Polish folks in Patterson, New Jersey, they right. hurt on the job. Pop would, pop would uh, represent them if they got hurt on the job, right? right. So then, then I'm thinking, I should be a lawyer. My, my father made sure I went to school because he didn't want me to go to Vietnam because he was a captain of the Second World War, United States Army Air Corps right. in Italy, and he fought the Nazis, and he knew I don't want my kid in the war. He wouldn't let me leave college. I'm not a student. I didn't want to go. I graduated college, and I said, you know what? I got to do the show business thing from that bug I got in third grade, and I went to the improvisation, Hell's Kitchen, 44th and 9th. It, this is 1976 with Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld and Gilbert Gottfried. So you with all those guys Boom, like that. boom. It, there has not been a film made about it. There has not been a book written about it. it. When comedy was rock and roll. And we all broke in. And it was, Rodney was coming in. Rodney Dangerfield was coming Were in. Were you doing stand-up? You would stay, I wanted to just, all I wanted to be is a working actor. I wanted to be what I do now. I'm a blue-collar entertainer. I ain't no big star. I, I, I just want to work. So I said, how do I showcase myself? So at the improv, they had a stage. So I got up and I did five minutes. And before long, people were going, hey, I need you for this commercial. I started working for Bob Giraldi, the director of New Bob York. Bob Giraldi, Giraldi, yeah. Giraldi, great director. I did all the, I started doing, Com Buick. I started doing, uh, they said, Yo, you're a Buick guy. They flew me to General Motors, Detroit. You can get better gas mileage from this full-size Buick LeSabre right. than from this VW Rabbit. I started making money. I started working. <laughs> now, were you there when Richard Belzer was there? Bells was that Catch a Rising Star. Bells, yeah. When I, where I got my nose broken by the mob. That's a whole other story. Ever tell you that story? No, let's hear it. Well, you know, I now I'm, I'm, this is the way comedy was back in the late 70s, if I may. So you got Hell's Kitchen and you got the improv. And Robert Klein and uh, Danny Aiello was hanging out. Bette Midler would come in. Woody Allen would come in. It was like, I can't even tell you how wild it was for a kid going from Jersey, hanging out at the improvisation. Right. Wait in a bar, you'd get up in front of two drunk people. That, yeah. yeah, and you, you try to do it. So you were working the limelight after that. I that think. was after that. Yeah. yeah, but I remember, I used to go down there to right, catch. Right, right. I saw Bells so, there. So now, well, now, the, the other upscale club, what, before the comic strip where Jerry Seinfeld was, was a Catch a Rising Star catch. for Rick Newman and the guys. Right. And Andy Kaufman was there. And Freddie Prinze, Freddie Prinze's father, Freddie Prinze, the original Freddie right. Prinze was there. And everybody was coming. Pat Benatar was there. Yeah, I remember at, that. So now they go, now Belzer was the MC. Belzer wrote the book on how to be Master of Ceremonies. He did. The Bells. He was the guy. He was the guy. He was the guy. So now I'm at the improv MCing with Chris Albrecht. And I go and I and I get a call on a Sunday night, which is my night off. Joe, you want to you want to go down to Catch Rising Star, and you want to be the MC at Catch Rising. I go. You mean Belzer can't do it? No, Bells and the guys want you. I'd be honored. I'd be honored. So now I'm with George Wallace. Remember you big George oh, Wallace? Oh, funny! Uh, all all these cats were down there, man. And now I'm on stage, and it's a good crowd, not a big crowd, but a great Sunday night crowd, and I'm doing great. In the back, there's like I can't see, but in the back, there's like a group of. Uh, Guys really well dressed and some what I would call painted ladies, you know, with the makeup and right, everything right, like right, that. Right. And I'm going like, hey, and now nobody told me nothing. I go in cold to catch a star and I go, hey, how you doing in the back? Like that crowd laughing. And I go, Oh, you can't you can't talk to me? You can't talk to me like this? Like like this. I go, and I go, I swear to goodness gracious, in the name of God, I go like this. 
what are you, what are you in the mob? You can't talk to me like that. You can't talk. What are you mobbed up like that? Boom, right on the money. It was the guys apparently who hung out there all the time. Do you think they told Joe about this? It Don't is. pick on the guys in the back. Guy walks over. Hey, I do not appreciate you making fun of us like that. Like it was like out of a, of a film. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm sorry. I was, I was just kidding. So he went, he goes to take me by the elbow and I do the Jersey don't yeah. touch me thing. I had guys on me in a second. <laughs> they, really? Oh, they was like into the, into the cloakroom. <laughs> listen to me, listen to me, oh, listen to me. Into the cloakroom like this. I'm going like this. Look, pal, I'm really sorry. And I feel a slap on my face. I go, now you don't have to hit me. I feel another slap on my face. I go, now really, I hear another slap. Now I'm starting to get a little angry. So I go after him. That was the last I saw of it. I had three guys on me, yeah. four guys on me, the old guys. And, the public, and I heard the, the most important words my dear friend John DeBellis, a fellow comedian, said to me, run, Joe, run. So I said, I somehow, by the grace of God, I got out of my sweater. I ran down First Avenue. The guy could, I ran faster than the guy. They I can't was, run. I was, no. <laughs> they can't. Uh, uh. They can run. I'm running like this. I'm going to go over here. So now I go, wow. So all the comedians came after me. They go, Joe, we got to get you to the hospital. I go, no, I'm fine. I, I, listen, I'm fine. Thank God it didn't kill me. Kill me. Right. No, no, you got to go. So now they take me to Lenox Hill Hospital. I go and I'm looking in the, in the mirror. My nose is over here. Wow. Three shots this guy hit me. He was he was like, he goes this. He goes, pop. With those slaps, they were the yeah. meticulous, calculated hits on wow. my face. Chip, broken nose. I bit, beat the heck out of me. A lesson, don't pick on the... The, the, the well-dressed guys and the pick painted on the ladies. the well-dressed guys in the shadows, folks. <laughs> yeah, I said, man. Wow. But and it was legendary. You know, hey, Piscopo's the guy who got beat up by the mob, man. Right. And, and, and then we had a sit-down, you know. We had a sit-down, and my father is an attorney. I, can, I, can I tell you this? You got time to tell you? No, I've got Pop, a lot of time. My yeah. father, my hero, like your father. God bless when I used, you were so eloquent at your dad's funeral. Yeah. I'll never forget that, how beautiful that was. And I feel the same way about my dad. I go, Pop, what do we do? He go, we go, we'll go talk to them, you know, my, my dad. And my dad was so smart. He, we go in and we sit down and I talk with some guy. And the guy, they offer us like a couple of dollars. Just said, look, don't talk about it. Just right. walk away. Just walk away. And I start to go, hey, Pop, we should probably suit him. And my dad goes, walk away. Walk away now. Yeah. Don't yeah. even think about walk it. Away. My father goes to the guy, he goes, thank you very much, sir. And I go, and I learned right there, boom, you don't mess around, huh? That, that was, I cut my teeth in the comedy business doing that, man, with wow. the craziness and the fights. So what would you say would, would be your first, you're doing comedy, doing yeah. stand, what was your first break? Would that be Saturday Night Live? Yeah, amazing. I was doing commercials. I was making, by the grace of God, I was doing pretty, making good money. And then um, they did a sweep of the comedy clubs in New York in 1979. Uh, For some reason, they asked Lauren to leave or he left or whatever happened. Uh, the, all the original cast was going, was leaving. Gene Domanian came in. That was Lauren's right hand girl on uh, Saturday Night Live, and they put a casting call out for Saturday Night Live. And I said, and me and Gilbert Gottfried, and 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 I think I don't know how Larry David was there, but I, I, all these guys were there. I didn't want to be. You can't follow Belushi and Ackroyd. You can't follow Gilda Radner. Right. You can't follow Alan Zweibel writing. You can't follow that. So they go, they go up. Oh, they pass by everybody. And then my buddy, the Run Joe Run guy, my yeah. buddy who told me to run from the mob, he said he knew the producer who's already hired as a writer. They called me in. I did an audition on the 17th floor, and they said, you know what? We need a utility guy to do impressions. We want you to do the audition. When's the audition? Next week. So I go. Uh, Paul Rubens was there. Uh, Gilly was there. Eddie Murphy was there. And we all did an audition at Studio 6A. This was, um, this was 79, Chaz. And we went in, and we did... Six minutes in front of a camera in, in Letterman's studio, Dave, which was then about to be David Letterman's studio. Six minutes. I didn't want the job. I was so cocky. They hired me. Then it always worked like that. They said, "Yeah, you're our wow. guy. You're our guy. You do impressions, and you're our guy." Yeah. You know. And then I met. Then I. Then we went up. This is interesting. I think. I hope. And then I go in and I see a kid up there, on the seventeenth floor, and a kid from Long Island. They go, you know Eddie Murphy? I said, no, I don't, I don't know Eddie Murphy. He goes, oh, he's a pretty funny guy from Long Island. Long Island? And if you're in Manhattan, you you know, know the comedy clubs in Long Island. It's like, so I saw Eddie, talked, sat, and then I, I got to know him. And I went, I went to the producers. I said, this guy's really funny. They had us do for an audition the Word Association sketch with Richard Pryor and Chevy Chase. If you remember yeah, that sketch, yeah. very, very cutting edge. Wow. So Eddie played Pryor. I played Chevy. Couldn't and do that now. No, you couldn't go. Couldn't you do couldn't that. touch couldn't. it. 
but but Eddie crushed it. He crushes it. And I'll go like, uh, I think he got the next prior here, man. Like that. And they were like, NBC was like, you know, he's a little too he's a little too edgy for us. I think he might be a little too hard Whoa. edge for us. So he was a featured player. But after that, that we did ten shows that were very, very tough. After that, we finally got our groove and by the grace of God, we pulled but, it uh, out. But you guys were known as, you guys would work together a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. You did, uh, yeah. you played Sinatra and he yeah, played. Ebony uh, and Ivory. Ebony uh, and man, Ivory. we would run, you are black and I am white. You are blind as a bat and I have sight. And I, and I, you know what? You can't do it now. You can't do any oh of that stuff. Oh my God, forget it. And You're then offending when, everybody. And I have to tell you too, if I may, because I've been so blessed to work with incredible talent. It's like to get it, to see a kid. Eddie was 19 years old. He was 19 years old. Wow. And you see, and you know the talent, and you could feel it. So now we're on live, and we didn't have a delay. I right. understood that a delay when the, right. the original said we didn't have a delay. So now when Eddie and I would go up, and we would do some silly stuff. It was he and I with the hairdressers, things you probably couldn't do now, but crazy stuff. And we would do it together. He, I would feed off of his reckless abandon. Because he didn't care. He didn't care. He didn't care. So I'm, now I'm looking into a camera. And back then we had, what, 20 million? We had a lot of viewers that oh, before. Oh, 20 million. You, you, you know what I mean? The, and the original had probably 40. Right. But Eddie, took, I, it was one of the greatest rides. We, you know, when he, we paid tribute to Eddie at the uh, Kennedy Center, and it was private, and it was Chappelle, and there was Arsenio, and, and Georgie Lopez, and everybody was there. And they said, they're all, everybody's, uh, all the, 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 it was like a Mount Rushmore comedy. And they were going, they were going, what are we going to say to Eddie? How do you say it? Do we have to be funny? I said, just speak from the heart. And that's what I did. Right. I got up from all those people. I said, Eddie, thanks for the greatest ride of my life, brother. I said, thank you, man. Because right. he, he was, it was fun. It was reckless. It was yeah. crazy. We didn't care. They fired everybody. Don't forget. When we first went on, they whacked everybody except Eddie and I. And a lot of good friends, very talented friends, I must say, got fired from SNL, but they kept Eddie and I. And it just worked out. But that was the... Once you go on SNL like that, you could work forever. And by the grace of God, I'm a, I'm a working stiff, and I'm always indebted oh, to the good. Oh, you're a very talented guy. Jim. Nah, cool. you know. I've seen, for those who don't know, he does. Your, are you your your show? Are you doing? Yeah, Atlantic we do it every City, week. We Vegas. go out all the time. Every week you go yeah. out. We'll talk about that at the end. You tell us where you're going to be. Yeah, whatever. you know what's so funny? So I'm I'm here. Mm. I did the Victoria Theater at NJ Pack. We're doing a benefit. You showed up. We we've been together. You and I on so many occasions. But how meticulous you are, and, and stop me if I'm pushing and I'm getting too personal, because you were doing, you said, I'm going to do some live stuff, and you were about to redo the Bronx Tale live, I believe, on stage. Yes. You did more research on that, because right. you came to see me. You came to see somebody else. You yes. went over here, you studied, and I'm on that stage right. at NJ Pack in Newark, and I'm looking at my pal Chad and going, this guy's studying what this show is. Well, yeah, you, you, you study things and yeah, meticulous. you get ideas. You say, okay, that's me, but that's no. He does that really well. I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. I have to do what I do best. You, you know, never stop like you learning, do. do you? You never stop learning. No, you, no. You know, well, I've seen, yeah, I mean, I see you get up there, play guitar, play <laughs> this, play drums. I go, holy <laughs> shit. I mean, I'm an actor. You know, I do, I, I'm, not, I'm not a comic. Can I tell them about, can I tell them about, the, about the parade? Can I tell them about the parade in, uh, in New Orleans? New, in New Orleans. Orleans. <laughs> this guy drags me down. He goes, Chaz, John. He goes, Chaz, you got to come down. I was going to be the... Uh, you were the Grand master, Marshal. Grand Marshal of the... Columbia. It was the, actually the St. Joseph's Day Parade. St. Joseph's Day now, Parade. This is like, you tell it. Go ahead. No, this is like the Super Bowl. Right. In, 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 in New Orleans. New Orleans. I'm it, Sicilian. It, oh, and they said to me, well, can you get Chaz Palminteri to go down? And I go, I don't know, I'll make a call. Because, Chaz, every time we talk, every time we do something, it's always with great respect. Because uh, you're a great guy. You're nice. one of the nicest. You're an icon. I was just saying it to your pals here. But I never abuse that. I don't want to abuse no, that. We, so, so, nice. so, so I go, Chaz, with respect. Molto rispetto. I said, they want you down in New Orleans, man. Can you come down? And you thought about it. And you went, all right, we'll do it. So they send a plane. Remember they send a plane? They send a plane. They send a plane for me. When I told them I was you, they sent the plane. <laughs> We're on the plane. And so Chaz calls everybody from Arthur Avenue to go down in the Bronx. We're on the plane and we're flying down. And all that. So Chaz goes, where's the food? Like they took out a deli. On the and, plane. And like it was like crazy. People. And we had, remember we ate. We oh had my never God, ate it was like Arthur Avenue. It was on the plane. <laughs> on it was the crazy. Plane. We, 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 we had the antipas. We had every, the sausage. We had everything, yeah, everything. coming out. That was the best. 
then we then we land, and then of course I'm doing a radio show. So I had a I had a I had a leave. Do you remember when I had to go and you got Yeah, and through the whole thing, Joe's telling me, Don't worry, Chaz, I'll be with you all the way. Every time we go somewhere, I, I, I go, Joe, I don't really know these people. He goes, I've done it before. I'm with you all the way. I'm your right hand man. <clears throat> go ahead. And then one day said, We want to go out, and I go. I can't. I got to get up early because I got my radio no, show. No, then going. they tell me, oh, Charles, we want to take you all over New Orleans. So I was tired. You know, I'm tired. And I go, and Joey goes, don't worry about it. You'll have a great time. I said, all right. So I'm walking towards the limo. The door, no, Joe, you didn't say it like it. The door opens up. The chauffeur opens the door for me. I go to get in. I go, Joe, you want to sit in behind me or in the front? He goes, he goes, no, no, no. I got to get up at 5 in the morning. I'm not going. And the guy shuts the door on me. Now I'm stuck with these guys for the rest of the fucking day. He's off sleeping. <laughs> it was, so that was just the start. Then they go like this. They go like this. <coughs> Excuse me. They go, we want Chaz in the parade. I go, this is Chaz Palminteri. He's an Academy Award-dominated actor. He's one of the greatest actors. I'm going to ask him to be in a parade. Yes, Joe, we want him on a float. <laughs> so I go... Oh, so I go, I go, Chaz, you're going to kill me. They want you in the parade. You're the grand marshal. There'd be tens of thousands of people. And Chaz goes, all right, take, wait, what time? I go, 5.30. He goes, Joe, you better be 5.30. I remember that like yesterday. Yeah. You said, it's got to be 5.30. I don't want to wait. I want to get right there. We go down, 5.30. They got a big float. Like, you, they're like I have the size of this room, maybe bigger. And we climb onto the onto the float. Now, we're supposed to be there and do the parade thing, see? And I'm with Chaz Palminteri. I'm, I'm the little guy. Chaz is the grand marshal. So then they go like this. Oh, you know, we got, we got, we got it. We have an insurance law. What, what's the insurance law? What do you got to do? You got to put this, this buck on, this belt on. You listen, listen to me. You got to put this they belt on. They strapped me into the float. <laughs> and you got to, it was like, it was like we were animals and you got to clip it onto this post. And Chaz, I, I don't want to be inappropriate. I have never, ever laughed more than that time. He started on a tirade. You mother, you, every word. I you, said, look at me, I'm a chained animal. <laughs> I, I almost lost it. I kept laughing. Oh. And then it starts like this. And this is what the, remember this? Oh, whoa, we're going. What are we doing? Oh. Now the float's moving. Now we're going. You mu And Chaz is going like this. They're going, Chaz, Chaz, Bob and Darren. He goes, how you doing? You son of a bitch. Like, I swear to God, I'm oh, ripping yeah. your throat out. I'm ripping your throat out. How are you? Good to see and you. And remember, we got off before the end. <laughs> we left. I said, I can't take it no more, Joe. <laughs> we bailed. We bailed, man. Right. Chaz, I said, he goes, he goes, Joey, Joey, we're bailing. We're bailing. <laughs> I go, we're bailing? We're bailing. When? Now. <laughs> and he just left the float. Listen, we're walking down the street. We bail. We're going back to the hotel. We don't know where we are. We're walking. Somebody yells from a van. Hey, Chaz Palminteri. Chaz goes like this. Can we have a ride? <laughs> like that. Yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, you got to hang with Chaz, man. We get into the van. I get in the back. You're next. You're talking with the people. The guy's driving, and he looks in the rearview mirror. He goes, I Joe Piscopo back there. Oh, my God. What's <laughs> going on? So we go. And we, went, we had the best right. time. We had, then we, went, time. we had dinner. We went back. and the, the, We did have a great time. Oh, it was the best. It was the best. And the love of the people, you know, down there right, walking the right. street. That was that was one of my all-time favorite stories. I tell it on the radio all the time. That is a great story. Oh, the best. And I'm sorry about that, you know? No. You want to go down next week? But we'll I learned my lesson. <laughs> I will never. That was that was called the ultimate Shanghai. <laughs> and this guy Shanghai. Getting me. into the limo. He turned around. Yeah. Joe, you want to sit there? I got to go to bed. I got to bed. Yeah. You know, so, so we, Joe, and I, I, yeah. you know, I want to talk to you about this. Uh -oh. This is important. I uh -oh. think it's important. No, it's um, how do you feel about? I mean, what, what is the most? You 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 you're on the air five nights a week. What do you think the country, the people, the way it's going? What do you think the the questions? How do you feel about? What are they asking, Joe? They're scared. They're scared. People, yeah, people are scared. So I have to tell you. You know, I'm an entertainer. I'm a blue-collar entertainer, like I say. I get on stage, I entertain. But then when Salem Media said, you, we want you on in the morning, I go, you know, I, I, they go, you conservative. I don't, I'm like a libertarian. I don't even know what I am. I just know I'm an independent, right. and I love this country. All I know that's is fair. I'm following the footsteps of our parents and grandparents. Right, that's fair. And, and, and because they love this country. And like I said before, the lo they learned the laws, they learned the language, and they, they wanted to be one thing, American. So I know that. So I go on the air and I talk. I talk just as I talk yeah, to you now. Yeah, I know. Now. That's why I'm asking. I'd, I'd say it on the air. People want to hear that. So I do. You make the leap in when you're doing talk radio, 
or do you couch it carefully and be politically correct? I made the leap in. I said, my faith is strong. I believe in God. I said, I, that we are one nation under God. I believe in the saints. They think I'm a cult at the radio station. I say, hey, St. Joseph's Day, get the Zapolis, you know? Right. But, but, you know, it's my culture. It's my heritage. And then I talk about going to church. Oh, I, I, you know, I forgot. It. I got to go to mass later. It's me. I just did everything that we knew, Chad, right. Chaz, growing up about, and people, more people, by the grace of God, listen to the show every morning because we all feel the same way. We love this country. The problem is the government can't get out of its own way. The mm. government does, if, has forgotten about we the people. So right. uh, the, the mantra of the show is truth, justice, and the American way, man. We, we love this country. I don't care. And, and we love all walks of life. And you, all, and like you said, every everybody who's, I don't care what color you are, what sex you are, we don't care. We love you. Come here. Let me hug you. We yeah. love you. We're a great country. They're trying, you know what people feel? They're trying to divide us. There's a meticulous effort to divide us, to call us names, to tell us we're bad and we're not. We are the greatest country in America. You know, you and me, we love Italy. I go, we're going to Italy yeah. in September. Love Italy, love yeah. the Italians. And we, when you're in Italy, everybody's nice. As, as a people, humankind in the world is yeah. nice. The politicians and the media wants to divide us, and my show brings everything together, I hope. That's what I try right. to do. And you think they, they want to divide us because oh, of what? Power and control. Boom. Yeah, you divide and, shut it down. divide and shut conquer. Shut it down. You got the, the COVID-19. You know, I went on the air before Joe Rogan did. I love Joe Rogan. He's the best. Yeah. I go on. You know, I, I don't have the audience. I got a great audience. I don't have the audience Rogan has. And I go, you know what? I think I got a, I got a therapy for this COVID-19 thing. Mm. I think you could do it. If you take, I talked about hydroxychloroquine. I talked yeah. about ivermectin. I talk, you know, I talked about remdesivir. I talked about all this. Can we at least have a conversation about, no, you can't. Oh, my God. You're, 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 now you're going to kill people. I think they, I think they just wanted to, us to just be scared to lock us up. Joe, man. I'm going to tell you, and again, I'm going to tell you a quick story. What happened to me? I got COVID. Nothing. I was asymptomatic. My yeah. wife got it. She almost died. Thank Whoa, God. It yes. was bad. It was bad for us. She had ten days in the hospital. We didn't know what that. We were like on pins and needles, yeah, but yeah. she survived. Yeah. But a, a year, a year or two later, a year, about a year later, I get COVID again. I, find, I get it in L.A., and I land here, and it starts getting bad one day, and the second day it's worse. I can't talk. My voice was full. I had 102 fever. And I said, hey, I got to jump on this before it gets yeah. worse because yeah. that's what you have to do. You yeah. got to get on it right that's away. Right. Exactly. In the beginning, the doctor said, no. Yeah, yeah. No. Right. Yeah. That's how my friend Phil, oh. Phil, God bless oh, his great. soul, God. passed away. So story. I said, "Look, I got to get on this." So I, I call up the, uh, I call up the uh, hospital here. They know me, and they say, "Chaz, we don't have the, uh, the, the intravenous stuff. I forgot the name of it." Yeah, there the, was ivermectin. Yes, or, and all that. Yeah, they said we don't have it. The government took it away. Yes, exactly. I call up Manhattan, Cornell. You know, I mean, best. I know the best doctors there. Yeah. Chaz, we can only give you steroids. The government says we can't give it. I call a dear friend of mine, a very big guy, and I tell him, he goes, I'll call you right back. Calls me back, he tells me, a doctor will be over there in about an hour and a half. He's going to give it to you intravenously. It'll cost you 8000 Wow. I said, send him over. Comes over. I, listen to this, show. Comes yeah. over, sets up the thing. I'm laying, I'm sitting on the couch. It's about 9.30 at night. I tell my wife, honey, stay away from me. Go upstairs. So, you know, I'm just going to rest on the big chair in the living room. She says, okay. She goes upstairs. He sits with me. He waits. He says to me, after it's over, he goes, I, he says, how long have you been feeling? I said, two days. I said, I, I, Doc, I got a hundred two and a half fever. He goes, you're going to be okay. Don't worry. That's what he said. Wow. He leaves. Yeah. And I'm like, I got the chills. You know, I'm sick. I can't talk. I lay in the I lay in my chair. Yeah. I wake up five hours later. I just woke up. It's gone. Wow. Joe. I'm not I'm it was like Jesus Christ came down yeah, and went, yeah. healed my son. Yeah, yeah. No fever. Wow. Throat gone. Wow. Everything perfect. I went, how could this be? Yeah, yeah exactly. I I kept saying. Yeah. How yeah. could this be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had that. That's exactly right. They could have gave that to everyone. That's exactly right. 
They had millions of lives. They could have saved, saved millions of that's lives, right, right. and they didn't. No, and then they oh, could have saved my friend, my that, brother. That's exactly right. Because mm. when I went, when I had it, and then I, I was with my pharmaceutical buddy, he happened to be in the pharmaceutical business. He goes immediately. He says to me, "Take the hydroxychloroquine." He goes, "Take the azithromycin and take zinc." But he gave me high doses of everything. Boom! I woke up the next morning perfectly fine, perfectly fine. Now my doctor says. That hydroxychloroquine, HCQ, I don't know that it works. I'll tell you what, it worked it for worked. me. It worked for me. Maybe some people it didn't. Yeah, but why can't you try it? So it, to your point, on the radio, when it comes to when we're watching what's happening in politics, for example, right? people want to know, they want to know work. And you know what I say most of the time on the radio? I, I'll open the show, 6 o'clock in the morning. I'll go, Can I, good morning, great to have you with us. Joe Piscopo, AM 970. It's not you. It's not you. You were right all along. That's what I say. People, I want to reinforce right. the goodness of people. We know what we're doing. The government's trying to divide us for power control and it's yeah, getting and, worse. And I have to say, this is not a new thing. This is not the Biden administration. I mean, obviously they do, but this went on, this went on with Bush. That's right. This went on with started. everyone. This is not a Republican Democrat That's thing. Right. Exactly right. They all want control. That's exactly right. You know, weapons of mass destruction, war. War. war, bullshit. Yeah, that's right. Kill all these boys. I go to uh, Walter Reed Hospital. I've been with these boys who lost legs at 19 years yeah, old. Yeah, so true. You know, George W., but, but they were wrong too. Lied to the country. This goes down the line, okay? Down the line. That's right. So again, all I'm asking for is, look, I loved Martin Luther King. Okay, I did. I loved Malcolm X. Not in the beginning, yeah. but after he went to Mecca, I liked him a lot. I read about him, and he realized that, hey, man, we could all be together. Right. And what did, what did Martin Luther King say? I'm waiting for the time when a person could be judged yeah. by the content of their character, not the color, not the of, their color skin. of their skin. And what are we doing today? Yeah. That's all we're doing. Yeah. Is the color of their skin. Hey, God bless you for doing that. You listen to what Malcolm X talked about. That guy, he was, you know, they call him a black supremacist. I'll tell you what, he was right on the money. He was uh, ahead of his time. Ahead of his time. Malcolm X, brilliant. Martin Luther King, yep. brilliant. Yep, yep. So, and, and they said it. Yep. We should be judged. You can't put people in positions mm. because of the color of their skin. So this is what I think, my dear friend, because we do it on the radio and I, go, I, I have to layer back the news. I got to triple check the news because they will lie to you. The, the the what they call the legacy media. Most of the media is going to lie to you, just just to be inflammatory and divide you, you know. But as we, but as we go on, after our generation, we saw JFK got whacked. Oh, it was Lee Harvey Oswald? I mean, really? You I mean, know what? Really? I I never used to. But be, I believed in my government. Like you can't. People would say that about Lee Harvey Oswald. I would say they. They got a report. That's they did the Warren, the Warren thing. Commission. That's exactly. I said, you guys, you conspiracy theorists. You know what, Joe? And this is what's sad for me. I can't believe anything anymore. Amen. Amen. That's, I can't. That Joe. is the mantra of the radio show in the morning. Chaz, we hit it. We hit a chord. I, we hit, and thank I you can't for saying it because sometimes anymore. my father believed. God rest his soul. He was my hero, man. And he fought in the Second World War, and he was a lawyer representing right. non-English speaking blue-collar laborers. I love this guy. He would believe the government said something. That was the law. That was the that law. was the law. So now we watch JFK get whacked. We watch Martin Luther King get whacked. Robert Kennedy gets whacked. The Civil Rights Movement. We watch LBJ thinking and masking that he's going to help certain communities right. when he was just doing it for power, power. and control. LBJ. Oh, I'm going off now. No, I'm telling Let you me something. say something. LBJ. Yeah. This man was a devout racist. This man was tutelage by Robert Byrd. Right. LBJ voted against every law to equal rights in exactly Texas. Right. Go down the line. Look up Google, folks, if you think I'm bullshitting That's right. you. That's right. Okay? LBJ said, and he only took on the civil rights thing because Kennedy That's started exactly it. right. Exactly and right. And then he said, you know what? And he's, they got him on tape. They got LBJ did you hear those? on did, tape. Did you hear those things? I heard it. We tape. can't even talk about we it. We can't even say. No, we can say yeah, what well, he said. I oh, can't say the word. Oh, but he oh. said, if we give these N-words. He used the N-word. He used the N-word. What they want will have their vote for the next 50 years. That's exactly right. That's what he said. Was, I heard the tape. 
after all of that, people are waking up. People are understanding it now. And oh, yeah. we're seeing it now, more than ever right now. It's even now, with, with uh, whether you, you, you love a, a politician, you hate a politician, the Department of Justice, the Department of Treasury, let's give 87,000 IRS agents guns. Hey, that's a great idea. Yeah. Who comes up with these guys? And again, it's not Democrats, it's not Republican. It's power and control. Power and, and control. And we fight every morning. You know, we have laughs, we have fun. And we take it lightly. But I have, right. I'm blessed with the best guests that we love when you come on. I mean, my goodness gracious, when you come on and we talk and we yeah. and you support the, the NYPD. How much how great how, is that? I listen to me. I'm I've been supporting the NYPD uh for the past probably thirty five years. They know they so appreciate it. I you got know, to can I tell a chess story for a second too about the NY about being in New York. We do the Columbus Day parade. Every year to celebrating Christopher Columbus, the right. guy that's discovered America, deal with it. So so now they were going to take the Columbus statue down. They were going to take the Columbus statue down in New York. 1891, the largest mass lynching of Americans was right. of Sicilian Americans in New Orleans. New Orleans. 11. Not only did they lynch them from lampposts, they dismembered them, dragging them right. out of jail cells because they were accused of killing a, a police official, which they did not do. They did not do They it. were the Dagos. They were the Wops. They were the Guineas. They were the dirty Italians. And they killed them and they hung them from lampposts. Right. The next year, to celebrate that horror, to remember and never forget that horror, they built the Columbus statue in Columbus Circle in New York. Because they, they realized they were oh, wrong. That's right. You know what Woodrow Wilson said? He was the president of the United States. Yeah. Nobody said when that happened. It's a good thing. Yeah. They got, they, you know what? The president of the United States, when they hung they got those what they 11 deserved. Italians, yeah. it's a good thing. They got what they deserved. So now they, you can't. So with a shout out to the folks at the Columbus Citizens Foundation, National Italian American Foundation, all these great organizations, Angela Vivolo, our, me, our mutual friend. Now I'm about to do a Columbus Day parade. We're in with Maria Bartiromo, and we're in the trailer. I'm about to go on here. We do three hours live, and then I see Chaz focused and on fire. And I know my man. I know my man. I know Chaz. He's got his. He's got his. I think yeah, your Yankee cap on, and you're going around. And I go, Chaz, what's up? He goes, they're not taking that statue down. Oh, he goes like pissed. this. Did not take. He goes, where's Cuomo, Governor Cuomo at the time? I go, what, Cuomo? I don't know. I go, where? I'm, on, I'm going on TV. He goes, I wish. He goes, so I go on the boots, and I'm with Maria. Maria's next to me, the great Maria Bartolome. And we're, I see Chad down there. He's over. You are over Andrew Cuomo yeah. like this. <laughs> not only did they not take the statue down, they put up Mother Cabrini right. as I, well. I got to say, I got to say about Andrew Cuomo. Yeah. Let me tell you about him. One thing, God bless him because he said to me, yeah. I know, because at that time I was fighting with uh, de Blasio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it was a big thing in the newspaper. Big newspapers. story, big huge story. story. Front page thing about, uh, you know, because they have a contest. Please vote the the, the women that we can put up. Yeah. She wins. Mother Cabrini wins by <laughs> not double, triple the votes. Yeah, yeah. They changed that. They said, well, we'll put her ne maybe next year. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? So I said, well, what could it be? It has to be either uh, they're complicit, at least, you know, bias, complicit bias. Mm -hmm. Well, he he flipped out uh, de Blasio, and he, and he had a radio show. My friend says, call him up. I said, you yeah, know what, Phil? Did. Yeah. Phil says, call him up. Oh, Phil told you to do Phil that? Phil said, call him up. I called him up. Phil was in the car with me. And I get, I said, he'll never put me on the phone. And sure in hell, they put me on the phone with yeah, the mayor. Yeah, yeah. And the mayor says, yes, I want to speak to you. And he goes, now, now that you're talking to me man to man, tell me, did you call my wife a racist? He's thinking that I, just, I would go, I most certainly did. <laughs> and he goes, but, uh, uh, but he goes, how dare you? My son is named Dante. What the hell does that mean? My son's named Dante. I said, I don't understand something. She won by, by triple all the votes. Why? He goes, well, we'll put her on the next one. No, there is no next one. Mother Cabrini deserves a statue. That's right. What this woman did. That's right. Look at Google Mother Cabrini. You Google Mother Little Cabrini. Little Italian girl Little came Italian in. woman started 47 yeah. charities all, all over the world. All around the country. All around the country. All around the country. Yeah, okay? Was, you, and Chaz, you got the statue stayed. Mother well, Cabrini was up. Right, and, and, and in and, fairness to that, I, I got to give uh, uh, Andrew Cuomo credit. He did, he did step up, Because he said, I, I'm, you'll get that statue, right. and we're going to put it in... Uh, uh, down by Statue down of Liberty, by, Liberty by Park. Statue of Liberty, and I said, I said, Andrew, I trust you, 
and he did it. That's right. And he goes, and nobody's taking the Columbus Day statue down. Yeah. And I was fighting, and he did it. That's right. So, I mean, I give that my props good, to Andrew for that. Chaz, that was my favorite Chaz, Chaz times. I my Chaz stories. Yes. My Chaz parliamentary times. That was so great. And then, and we, and I got to tell you, on behalf of the community, because, and again, man, we're all Americans first. We right. love American. And, and, but thank you for that, man, because the way you fought for that, it, it resonated like I can't tell you to the well, community. Well, no, no, they're not taking Col Columbus Day is our day. It's our day to celebrate as Italian Americans. Right. Okay, there's a whole big stories about Columbus. Uh, you know, I did that documentary on great it. documentary. Yeah, oh, thank you. You and, gotta look at that. Well, documentary. it was because you know, look, he he came over. Yes, war back then. Were there sacrifices? There was a lot of human sacrifices back then. Now, Columbus didn't do that. But he was the, gone. He was gone when it all happened. He was He's gone. Just, yeah. Now, did his soldiers cause friction? They only caused friction because. There was this uh, tribe uh, called the Caribs, yeah. and the Caribs started everything with them. Yeah, yeah. That's how all of that happened. I mean, if you if you if you're with your your crew and you and, you get and then, shot at, get killed, and you, you got to fight back. And you got people who are gonna do what? Eat you? Yes. Then you got a problem. You got to fight back. <laughs> okay, but be as it may, because of him, he started the. And I know some people are gonna call me up and, and disagree with me, and that's fine. All I'm saying is, it's not one day. Indigenous people have their own day. Mm, that's right. I think it's the 19th of August. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. Or November, something November, like that. Yeah, 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 they yeah, have, yeah, they yeah, should have yeah, their own absolutely, day. God bless absolutely. you. Absolutely. Could we have our own day? Yeah, I know. I that's know. all we're asking. It's so true. And I keep thinking, uh, Chaz, when my grandfather came over, Rosario from Avellino, and when he saw the Statue of Liberty, tears in his eyes, they, they so just wanted to be American. They so loved this country. And that, and that, again, when I'm on the radio, whether it is in the morning or we do Sundays with Sinatra, right. Frank Sinatra, but if I may, just pivot there for a moment, this guy is like 100 years of American history, almost 100 years. You know, his career was 70-plus years, this guy. Yeah, and yeah. everything that my father went through, my grandparents went through, Frank Sinatra went through. Right. And he epitomized just what's what's great to be American, you know? Yes, I mean, what about when Frank Sinatra sang that song? Uh, yeah, yeah, House uh, I Live In. The House I Live In. Yeah, yeah, oh, my yeah. God. That, I mean, he was a proud American. I, like... Like, he loved this country, heart and soul. When he said at Madison Square Garden, 1974, the main event, the one where Cosell introduced him, right. and he went on there, and he said, you know what, uh, I just want to tell you how proud I am to be here. And, and, and my father, who is not here today, may not have been able to say thank you, but let me tell you how proud I am wow. to be part of this country. Boom. That's it. And you know what? I feel like the tenor and patriotism of the country is slipping, but not on my radio show in the morning. Right. Not when we hear you talk here. You know, with to, to your million right. people, and so, so, so we got to enjoy it, and we do it, and we have fun. And then Sunday nights, if I could plug Sundays with Sinatra, you know what? WABCRadio.com. Boom! No, it's so much. Every fun. Sunday, what time, Joe? Two, it's a, it's six to eight East Coast time. Six to eight. You could you could podcast it, and it's syndicated nationally in stations. We're in like Palm Springs and other stations, right. and in Montana of all people of all places. Right. But you know what? Celebrating the Great American Songbook through the eyes of the me for me. One of the greatest entertainers of all time, Francis yeah. Albert Sinatra, and you still you still own the best story, the best now, Frank now, Sinatra wait, story. Wait a minute, Joe. When, when Sinatra, obviously, he was fairly young when you, you and Eddie would you would do Sinatra. <laughs> did you ever meet him and say, "I like the way you do it"? Yeah. Well, you know what I did uh, when I was on Saturday Night Live, and they said you got to do the Frank Sinatra impression because that the audition for SNL that I told you about where we were there, and I did the uh, Frank Sinatra impression. They said you got to do that, and I said I'm not going to do it. Well, you got to do it. You, you, this is what you do. I said, I can't do it. It's about my father. It's about the greatest generation. It's about Frank Sinatra. I don't want to disrespect Frank Sinatra. I'm not going to do it on national television. So Dick Ebersole, a producer at the time, goes, Joe, we need that. We need that now. I go, all right, I'll do it. I wrote a letter to Frank Sinatra, to Mickey Rudin, his lawyer at the time. Right. And I said, Mr. Sinatra, Joe Piscopo, I'm an Italian kid from North Jersey. Uh, you're a hero. You're, my father right. tells me you're the greatest entertainer ever. What I do on SNL is out of respect and love and I will always watch your back. A nice long letter. I did it. Didn't hear anything. I did it again. Didn't hear anything. I do it now. It's getting a thing. It's like Piscopo's doing the Sinatra thing. Then Eddie and I do our thing. Not hear anything. Then one day I get an invitation in the mail. I get a beautiful, up at 17th floor at NBC, a beautiful embossed wow. envelope. And it says, from the Friars Club. I go, what's this? I open it up. An invitation to the roast of Dean Martin and the Master of Ceremonies. Frank Sinatra. Wow. I ran into Eddie's office. I go, Eddie, look at this, man. The Rat Pack. Look, I got invited, man. Yeah. I got invited. And it was the old man. It was Mr. S. So there, he wanted me to do him to him. 
And I did it. And I did the song. I got up there with D. Martin to my right. Sammy was there. Whoa. And Frank Sinatra is there. It's Frank, Frank, this is the way it really happened. I, I embellish on stage a little bit, but because we know each other, I got to think right. exactly what Emmis, as we say. So he had, he had a, like a Chesterfield, whatever he smoked, the Camels, Jack Daniels, and the old man's watching me. And I said, I love the way you say the word you. And he goes like that. The people go, what's he going to do? So I go, like in the song, I don't stand a ghost of a chance. So I sing it to Frank Sinatra. I don't stand a ghost of a chance <laughs> with you. I do just like that. Yeah. And he's like, he's going, that's pretty good. He goes like that. That's pretty good. And I go, can I call you Frank? He goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Got the biggest laugh of the night. Like you're good, kid, but don't mess with me. Don't all right? mess with me. Yeah, wow. and, he, and we were. It was a love affair. No, that's ever a since. thrill. Love affair ever since. Yeah, he was the one of the greatest humans he I've was ever the met. Yeah, he calm, was. calm, nice, always, right. always pleasant. I, I didn't. I was never on the inside. He, we, we'd go to the, the Meadowlands right. or Madison Square Garden, and then the A right. list would be all there. You know, right. probably there. You were probably there with Gregory Peck and everybody. Me, I was always off to the side. But the old man, oh, he'd wink at me always with respect. And that, and when I go on and I do the show yeah. every weekend, it's it's to keep that heritage alive, the legacy of the great Frank yeah. Sinatra alive. I did one of those shows. You, you, you kid me. You, you, no, you, I did a, I was the DJ on one of those you, shows. You, you know what? When you come on, when you remember you came, we did the celebration on his birthday. That's you remember right. we came? Yes, yes. We went to Patsy's. We were in the same place where the old man used to hang That's out. Right. That's right. And you correct. were there. And yeah. I said, Chaz, I said, this is why I love this guy. I got to tell you. I, I go, Chaz, tell the, tell the Frank Sinatra story. We, we, I mean, I, now I'm teasing it. I don't know if you, I get you could Google it or you could tell it here, but you just killed it and crushed it. And by the way, we were on national radio national and you told radio. it. it was I'll tell it quickly. I'll paraphrase. For those of you who don't know Best the story, story, they put it in one of these books. Yeah. The way you wear your hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill Zemi. Yeah. Bill Zemi, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's a story. I was with Frank Sinatra at his house in Malibu and we were both out there alone and I could never get over who he was. I was with Sean Connery, Jack Nicholson, obviously Robert De Niro, Pacino, did work with all of them. The old man, I just, every time I was with him, I'd be like, holy shit, it's Frank Sinatra. I just could not, I couldn't get over it. I, he was larger than life for yeah, me. Yeah. And then finally, uh, we're there, and he asked me if I drank, and I said, no. He said, you don't drink a lot. I said, no, I never really drink. He goes, yeah, he's cracking jokes. He goes, don't drink gin. He goes, I drank gin when I was 18, woke up when I was 21. You know, <laughs> That's and a was, great life. Anyway, so I'm, life. I'm drinking my Perrier. He's got a martini with two olives in it. And at the end, he finishes the martini, and he looks at me. He says, Chaz, he says, share my olive. And he's holding the, the toothpick with the two olives on it. And I said, what? He said, come on, share my olive. And I said, oh. I, so I took one of the olives off the toothpick, and he goes, you ready? I go, yeah. And I pop the olive, and he takes his olive, and he says, ah, come here. And he hugs me, and he says, you're a good kid. I love you. Oh. You come to my house anytime." And I didn't know really what just happened. So I walk yeah. inside, and in there, there was, uh, there was Don Rickles and uh, Stephen E.D. Gourmet. I, I, I think... Uh, Gregory Peck was yeah, there. Yeah, that was the one. Gregory Peck and him were best friends. I didn't they know. Were. I, I yes. never knew that. yes. And then all of a sudden, I'm telling the story to Don Rickles, and I said, yeah. I said, Don, what's with this? Frank gave me an olive to share. And what is that about? And Stephen and Edigo and they are there, and I'm asking everybody, what's with this olive? Because he never did that before to me. And I hear, Frank shared an olive with you. And I go, I turn around, it's Gregory Peck. <laughs> and I said, yeah, what's that about? And he says, that's a sign of... He goes, the Rat Pack used to, that, used to do that, Chaz. It's a sign of great friendship. They would drink their martinis and share their olives. Oh, man. He goes, welcome to the club. <laughs> it's great. I was like, wow. <laughs> One of the highlights that, of my life. That, was, that's, that is wonderful, yeah. man. Anyway, that's a... And what did the old man tell you? You told me, when, he goes, you know, I love the Bronx Tale, he said. He goes, oh, he goes, I love Bronx He goes, Bronx Tale. He goes, you know, I knew those guys. I said, I know you did. <laughs> he goes... It was a great movie, a great, and he goes, and I know a great movie. I said, wow, that's great, Frank. He goes, you know why I know a great movie? You know, I could tell it's a great movie. I said, how? He goes, I didn't fucking fall asleep. That's what he said. <laughs> and I laughed. And he said, fucking. And I laughed, and uh, 
he was a great guy. I really. Uh, it is, and, and, and you know, with uh, uh, Tina and running everything, everybody yeah. watching and guarding, rightly so, the keeper of the of the great Sinatra legacy. Yeah. I feel a responsibility every Sunday night. I don't do a radio show where let's listen to this song, let's listen to that song. Right. It's a documentary. It's a documentary with a theme. We have the best callers in the world. You talk about his life. Everything. And, and when it, is that? Let's say it again, Joe. Yeah, yeah, you right. know, 6 o'clock East Coast time on WABC. You go WABCradio.com. WABCradio.com. But uh, it's syndicated different stations. Uh, it's picked up a, a, several, right. a, a lot of stations in the country. But it's all, the, you know, that time. That time was and, just... Oh, oh, and I have to tell you, I don't want to keep... I know I'm, I'm no, we're it okay. Time. Go ahead. We got a few minutes. I got to tell you, is when I came here... And, and 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 Jazz says to me, "Hey Joe, uh, I th- I'm going to be at your restaurant on Friday. By the way, well, okay, we, we got clients who coming in. Right? They oh, go, yes. they go. Where yeah. you want to go? I go, Jazz Palmetteria in Midtown, man. Where else oh, am I right. going to go? Great. Right? Thanks. You know, no. So we're going there. So I text Jazz. Jazz, we're coming in. And he goes, Joe, you want to do my podcast? And I, everybody's talking about this podcast. Now you do. God, God well, bless you. you. How you you just stay on top of it? You know, I'm not and I'm not patronizing you because no, we know each other you, well. Enough. So now I go. You know, all right, now you go, where, where? I said, where is it? I was on the air. I was on the radio doing live, and, right. the, and we were at a commercial break texting you, and you said, here, and we're here, and you gave the address, and I and I went, I'll be there. I'll be there. I only said that to Frank Sinatra, because you know why? Oh. That, you know why? It's lay, it, it's friendship. It's friendship, loyalty. loyalty yeah. It's commitment. It's respect. Yeah. It's that's it's a, that is going away. That's right. what's slipping in our society. Yes. And when you do these podcasts with your friends, whether you got Bill Burr on hysterical, you know, or whoever you're talking to on this show, right. or I'm on the radio, it's all about that. So I come here right. with great respect and with great love, you know, and a commitment to to your legacy and appreciation right. to La Familia. El and also importante. the best dressed guy that ever been on my show. <laughs> I have to tell you, <laughs> Sandy's going to be insulted. <laughs> I trust. That's right. Sandy Blue Eyes is not going to like that. <laughs> like, well, what do you think? Huh? Yeah, it looks great. Nineteen uh, sixties. I wore the nineteen sixties. Ah, you look great, style, man. You know? So they can catch you five days a week. Yeah, man. AM nine seventy. AM nine seventy. That's politics. That's the politics. answer. That's politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to keep fighting for this country. We will, man. You know what? And, 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 and if I may, chat, JoePiscopo.us. JoePiscopo.us. Yes, please. Uh, on, the, on, on the end of August, uh, we're doing a, a great benefit. I take my son, Michael. I know how close you are with your children. Yeah. And Michael goes out. Uh, Mikey P., you see him on Instagram. He's like a star. I put him on stage should, with me now. Well, how could they, they can go to his Instagram? Yeah, you go Mikey P. on, on Instagram. but And then JoePiscopo.us, you see where we are. Because we perform once a week. I go out all around the So country. you go all over. So if somebody wants yeah. to know where you're performing, yeah, they jo- go where, Joe? JoePiscopo.us. US. Thank you so much, Joey, for being you, on the show. This is this is really oh, enjoyable. Thank you. Folks, chazpalmentary.net if you want to come and see the show. This has been great. I've been trying to get this guy in a show, but he's so damn busy all the time. Uh-huh. But Joe Piscopo, go see him. Go listen to him in the morning. Sunday with Sinatra. Uh, really a talent. Don't forget, again, chazpalmentary.net or go to my Instagram and uh, check out my restaurants, one in the city, one in White Plains, Chaz Palmetary Italian Restaurant. God bless you, and uh, I'll see you soon.